example. So this is from the polar coordinate section. Let's do number 31, just as a little warm up. I have an interesting prompt for you guys, actually. I haven't decided whether to put it in a quiz or, <laughs> I think the quiz might be a little too scary for this, but uh, maybe we'll do it sometime today in class. But uh, let's do this problem here, uh, just kind of to get warmed up. Uh, why don't you guys try to spend about two minutes on your own, try to see if you can draw the region for this, um, and then convince yourselves that this region might be best uh, described using polar coordinates. So that means you have to figure out that correct angle and stuff like that. So um, give it a few minutes to think about. Meanwhile, I'm going to cheat and go to Desmos and sign it that way. So go ahead amongst yourselves. Figure it out. Circle. Okay, so we got this uh, x is equal to 1 minus y squared, which we know should become a circle. And we have that other one that looks like it's going to be a line. And if we look at it as y is a function of x, kind of line y equals mx plus b, then we can see that it passes through the origin. It has a slope of whatever that is, 1 over root 3. So a little hint about the slopes of the line passing through the origin like this, they are related to the tangent function. So if you think to yourself tangent of what is equal to 1 over root 3, that might help. Um, but if it doesn't, you can draw it out and see what happens to it. So it looks like between these two functions, uh, my x whatever shape this is, is going to pass through a line and through a circle or a portion of a circle. And it looks like it's going to go y is equal to 0 to 1 half. So x equals uh, 1 third y or y, whatever in terms of y. And this is your circle. <clears throat> so it looks like that's probably the region. And uh, the thing that I have to figure out is what this angle is. So if the y is 1 half, that sign of what is 1 half? Sign is the y value, right? Uh, and this is a unit circle. So we're not going to scale anything. So sign of what is equal to 1 half? pi over 3, so this or pi over 6, so this is probably pi over 6. We can make sure, uh, be absolutely sure of that, but I think that's what it's going to turn out to be. So it looks like we got, we can, from here we can get our, um, our, uh, what's that called? <laughs> our limits, our limit, we get our limits from uh, polar coordinates. But I want to show you that we can also see this in Desmos. 
So this is your half circle, a half circle on the right half because it's x equals to a positive, a square root. And then x or y, we can just say, yeah, x equals to the square root of 3 times y. So there's your line angle. And if you put this, put these two things together, um, square root of 3 times y less than or equal to x, less than or equal to the circle. Oh, why is it down there? Yeah, we probably need that. So there's that uh, circle, a piece circle that we're looking for. And I was telling you about the y slope. So the slope of 0 all the way up to the slope of pi, the tangent is really, the tangent A is the slope of, that we're looking for. And so uh, if we let A equal 30 degrees, pi over 6, then that line is actually passing through that line that we were looking for. Okay. So if you let the tangent A be the slope of your angle, then that tells you what angle you're making with a positive x axis. That's a neat little trick. I don't know if anybody knew that. But now that you know that, you can tell your friends all about it. <clears throat> All right, so we have our idea that uh, our region can be given by this little segment. And so if we write this in polar coordinates, what's your R go from? R goes from where to where? Zero to one. And then you have this zero to one. How, what are the angles? Angle is going to go from where to where? 0 pi over 6. So that's it. You have your limits. You can set up your integral. So your integral then would become uh, x. x is r cosine theta. y is r sine theta. And y is going to be squared. And remember your dA, your dx dy, is going to become r dr d theta. And your R limits, that's the inner integral. Your R limits are going to go from 0 to 1. And your theta limits are going to go from 0 to pi over 6. Okay. And I think, um, I usually don't care about integrals. So I think this might be something that's easy enough to do. And I want to keep showing you that trick that um, if you can factor out the R's, from the thetas, then you can just split this up into two easy single integrals, uh, one with an r and one with a theta. So I have one r, two, three, four r's, r to the fourth, it looks like. So I'm going to integrate my r from 0 to 1, r to the fourth. And I would have factored that out, and what would be left would be stuff with thetas in it. And theta goes from 0 to pi over 6, cosine theta, sine squared theta, d theta. And I think this is one of the easier trig uh, substitutions because you just let u equal to the sine and then the cosine will cancel. So I wouldn't mind taking time doing that.
except you have a negative sign popping out, right? Or negative cosine. <laughs> and then, uh, <clears throat> so that would take this uh, cosine d theta, cosine theta d theta, and you'll have a u squared. Uh, we can change the limits too, if we want. Do you change limits now or you change it back? Yeah? I don't know. Yeah, it is, right? Derivative of sine is positive cosine. Thanks. Get those mixed up all the time, right? All right, <clears throat> so it's positive. Uh, we could change the limits. U of 0, sine of 0 is 0. U of pi over 6, sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So this one we can integrate already. It's uh, r to the fifth over 5 from 0 to 1. So that's just going to be 1 fifth. And then we're going to integrate this u limits now. u goes from 0 to 1 half. Uh, the cosine and the d theta go away. This is just going to be u squared du. And that's u cubed over 3. From 0 to 1 half. So that's uh, 1 eighth. 8 times 3 is 24. 1 fifth for the first integral. 1 over 24 for the second integral. And this is... Okay, so fairly simple, straightforward. When you're doing homework, try to take advantage of integrals that are kind of semi-simple like this. And of course, if the integral is too hard, just punch it into Wolfram Alpha and, and get your answer that way. <clears throat> there are a couple of things I throw in the Wolfram Alpha, and when it starts dealing with imaginary numbers and stuff, it looks for the first complex root, which isn't a real root. And so I think I had an issue with one of those last time. Um, but anyways, well, this is it. Questions? This is our little warm up. OK. Uh, but the main part was. Being able to get this, and I hope if you weren't able to get this, we'll, I'll throw another problem at you guys. Um, maybe a take home, maybe an extra credit problem. Have we had any extra credits for this class yet? For this class? I think we had one or two, right? Anyways, there's a cool problem for you guys to work on. Uh, let's uh, jump to the next section now, because I think we're ready. So the next section is all about um, applications. And we're already kind of digging into the applications using uh, volumes and areas. Actually, I want to talk a little bit more. I think there was a homework problem or there were some problems in the section that dealt with areas. And we could actually, I think I mentioned it briefly, that we can actually use double integrals to find areas. Um, but then the other applications involve stuff like uh, physics and statistics and stuff. So we'll look into that. Uh, let's first take a look at the idea of a volume and area. All right, so I have some stuff written down about volumes and areas over here. And um, let's start with a volume because this is something that we've been doing already. <clears throat> if you have a solid, if you want to identify a solid between two surfaces, and the bottom surface could possibly be zero. 
your uh, xy plane. Uh, but you can look at it as a, a volume, the space between two surfaces uh, over a specific two-dimensional region, then your integral, your double integral to find the volume is going to be given by this. Okay. So that's stuff that we've been doing. Actually, we've been finding volume under the surface, assuming it's above the xy plane. And so in that case, your g of xy is equal to zero. So we can call that a special case. Um, volume under surface. And then usually not mentioned, but it's over the plane. Then your second function is zero because that's the xy plane. And so we've, ju we've just been really looking at the volumes using <coughs> double integrals and stuff. So now let's change this around a little bit and let's take a look at the area. So we already know this stuff. Uh, now let's let's bring it down a dimension and look at area. When we're looking at area, we we could find areas using single integrals, right? Yeah, we can look at areas looking at sing single integrals. And one way to do this is that if we're looking for the area, let's say between two functions, f of x and g of x between A and B, then we can just say that the area is equal to the integral from A to B of f of x, the top function, minus g of x, the bottom function, dx. Is that correct? So what we can do is we can look at this. I think we took a look at this from the approach that uh, what if you're looking for the volume, but the height is equal to 1. What is that going to give you? It's just going to give you the area, right? Except the units will be a little bit different. And so I want to play on that idea and work with this single integral that we've done in Calc 2, where we found areas, and expand it or go backwards a little bit. So maybe we'll use a different color. Maybe you look at f of x and g of x as y values and then bring it up a level. <clears throat> and then imagine that this is uh, an area on the region that we're looking at. And remember how we used to find the area of the region we're looking at? We're kind of just draw a line parallel to the y-axis business, and then you go in, and then you hit. Um, g of x first, and then f of x, and then your y limits are going to be those functions, and your outer limits are going to be constants, and then we can set this up as a double integral. The question is, what goes inside here if it's a double integral? Well, it's that idea where if you pretend that the height is equal to 1, you're really just looking for that area, right? Let me see if I can draw this sideways. This is my x. This is my y. So. My f of x function here, my g of x function here, my a to b function values, can you see it sideways now? Pretty cool, huh? 
So now, imagine you have a plane z is equal to 1, and then you're looking for the volume of this thing. Okay, well, that was a nice drawing. It's, now it's all gone. And you see that this is the same area, except it has a thickness of one unit in the z direction. And so the volume of this is exactly the same as the area of this, except instead of area in square feet, centimeters, whatever we're measuring in, it's actually going to be in cubic feet or centimeters, but the value is the same. In fact, if we take the integral of this double integral with respect to y, integral of 1 is just going to be y, right? And we evaluate y from g of x to f of x. What do you do? You put f of x in, minus, and then you put g of x in. And that's exactly the same thing. So the point is that you can find the area using double integrals. That's not a big deal. It seems like it's a silly thing to, to talk about, but um, it'll come into play later on for us when we start extending things. And the point is that the function that's inside of the integrand of your double integral is just one. And this will give us the numerical value of the area, but if you're counting your units, then it'll give us the units in three dimensions instead of two dimensions. Okay, questions? All right. Um, let me see if I can find some area. Now there's no area problems. Oh well. You know, you just download this from our website. What? What? Oh, yeah, it's all on there. Right? Yeah, all this chicken scratch here. <laughs> it's all on it's all on the notes. Okay. <laughs> let's uh let's move on to another application. So, we got areas and volumes. Uh, let's take a look at density, mass, and center of mass. Uh, here's a whole list of physics stuff that you can use. So you you guys have done density functions in Calc 2. Where the density is dependent on a specific value of x. And so you're running along a one-dimensional line. And as x changes, your density is going to change continuously. And so that's the density along a line. Now we're looking at a density along a two-dimensional plate. So this could be uh, a plate of a certain shape, and then 
your density from one part of the plate changes as you go to another part of the plate. And if you want to find the total mass of it, then you can just multiply it by the densities. Um, one example to think about is if you have a, if you have a, I don't know, a blob of paint, and then you spin a plate around, and so the blob of plate plates, blob blob of paint stays in the middle of the plate, and then as you go out further, it gets thinner and thinner. So it looks like your your density of your your paint is going to change as you go outward. So that's a simple density function that's probably going to be circular or something like that. Uh, but you can find the whole mass, so the total amount of the paint that you've spun out into this plate by just doing like a double integral like this. So that's uh, one approach to it or one example. <clears throat> so the mass is going to be given by the double integral of the density function over the region, the domain that you're looking at. And then there's uh, the moments also. I think this is the first moment uh, with respect to x, the x-axis, and with respect to the y-axis. Notice that the x and y are changed. Uh, and then the center of mass, uh, it's going to be like, uh, we'll see when we look at the statistics portion, how it relates to the, to the mean. And that's what the x-bar is, is really the mean. Uh, it's going to be the m sub y over m. That's the, the center of mass. Uh, the center of mass, by the way, it's a two-dimensional point. It's a place where you can balance your plate at one point. <clears throat> and then that's going to be where you know the, the middle density is, so to speak. And then there's uh, second moments, uh, moments of inertia in x and in y. And then the moment about the origin, assuming this is some sort of a circular thing happening. <clears throat> All right, so these are some of the formulas. Uh, if you want to know more about them, you can talk to a physics teacher. <laughs> Let's see if we can try to do some of the problems that are related to this. Uh, some density problems here. Uh, let's try, let's start off with number three. It's a nice simple one. Uh, our region looks like it's a rectangular region, which is going to make our computation nice and easy. Our, our, uh, Density function is dependent on the y only, so move along the x doesn't matter, so it's just dependent on the y. So let's see if we can find out this density um, or the mass. So the mass is going to be equal to well, let's figure out the region. Well, let's figure out the double integral. R of the function k times y squared dA. So that's the general formula for the mass. And based on R, we have to figure out our limits of integration. So we're going to do this dy dx or dx dy. I guess it doesn't matter because they're constants. Your R is going to be 1 to 3 in the x and 1 to 4 in the y. So those are your limits. So then your mass is going to be an integral of k. We can move the k outside now. Well, yeah, we'll move it out now. Uh, the y squared, let's integrate with respect to y. And that's going to be from 1 to 4. And then we integrate with respect to x. That's going to be from 1 to 3. Okay. Looks like it's uh, it's got constant limits. You can take them out, you switch the order, do whatever you want. If uh, if I take it out, I'll see how much easier it's going to be. Uh, so there's no x's, so I can just say one to three dx, and then one to four y squared dy. Uh, the integral of uh, one dx is just x. You put 
three in, you put one in, it's three minus one, that's just two. And then the next integral, y squared over two or y cubed over three. And then you put four in and you put one in. So uh, that's uh, four cubed over three minus one cubed over three. So what's that, 64? 63 over 3, and then there's a 2, 2, 63 over 3, K, that's 126. Okay, pretty straightforward. Let's try another one. Where's the other one? Triangular region? Nah. Oh, they want us to find the center of mass too. Oh, sorry. Let's let's go on and find the center of mass. Um, so we ha we have the, just the mass. To find the center of mass, we need the first moment in uh, in along the x-axis. So I think that's m y. This is going to be the integral over the region of x times the density rho of x, y, dA, like that, my, oh, this is along the y. All right, so let's uh, let's walk through this computation. Uh, we have our our limits already, so that's all set up, and then we'll just do the integral. So this is going to be a constant k outside, double integral of x times y squared. Uh, what did we do last time? D, I guess it doesn't matter. Dy, y goes from one to four. And x goes from 1 to 3. And we can split all that up. 1 to 3 of uh, with respect to x. Integral 1 to 4. y squared dy. <clears throat> Oops, there's an x in here. So um, this part's going to stay the same. That's uh, 63 over 3, right? And this is K. And so this stuff in the middle is X squared over two. And then we put nine and we put three in there. We get three squared over two minus one squared over two. So K times eight over two, that's just four. So it looks like it's double this, 256.03k, okay, oh, did I do that right, no, two fifty two. I get 256. I was playing 2048 in my head. Uh, 
Okay, is that cool? All right, we have that. Let's uh, find the other one. MX. This is uh, over the region. This time it's Y rho of X, Y, V, A. So that's K, uh, double integral of Y times Y squared dy going from 1 to 4, x going from 1 to 3. So split this up again, integral from 1 to 3 of just dx. We know that that's going to equal a 2. Was it 2? Yeah. And then this time we're going to integrate uh, y to the third from 1 to 4. So y to the fourth over four, we put four in there. Four to the fourth over four minus one to the fourth over four. I don't know which is easier it is to find four to the fourth and then subtract one. What's four to the fourth? That's two fifty six. Okay, two fifty six. So it's two fifty six minus one is two fifty five. <laughs> um, two k times two fifty five over four. I suppose we can cancel this, and then we get. 255 over 2k. Okay. All right. So that's not the center of mass yet. The center of mass it has to be divided. So let's uh, let's work this out. Let's divide out. Um, <clears throat> it was a two that got canceled. All right, so X bar, just in a different color, MX divided by M, little m. So MX was 255 over 2K, little m was 126 over 3. What's this equal to? The K's will cancel. <laughs> I think that's all it's going to cancel. Anybody get an answer? It's what? Really? Oh, bummer. Let's call it Y bar then. I always get those mixed up. I don't think anything is going to cancel, huh? All right, so let's three times two fifty five is seven seven sixty five. Uh, One twenty six times two two fifty two. Oh, uh, let's. <laughs> what is it? 85.28 oh oh let's uh let's g give me the decimal
3.03. Okay. All right, uh, let's find x bar, which is my divided by little m. My, we got that first. That's 252 over 3 times k. And then little m again is 126 over 3. The k's again cancel. Oh, we got threes are actually going to cancel. So 252 over 126 which is approximately decimal. What is it? Oh, just two. All right, let's think about this. We have a plate, it's a rectangular plate. It's, the density is K, whatever K is some constant times Y squared. So that means if we're looking at your plate, the more we go up in the y, the more dense it's going to be, right? The dense is going to be the square, square density. If you move along the x, it's not going to change in density because there's no movement. There's no x in a, in a row. Row of x is just k times y squared. And so we're going to be more dense at the higher levels of, of y. Now, if we look at x bar, X bar is 2. X bar is cut right in the middle. So it doesn't matter what the density, how the density changes in Y, it's going to be an even density along the X. So you would imagine that kind of makes sense, that the X bar should be right in the middle of the edges of the plate. Now for the Y, we got it to be 3.03. .03. So it's 1 two, three, so it's a lot closer to the top part because it's more dense than the top part of the plate. So if you look at this as a plate, it's, it's, it's like heavier on the top part. So if you were to take this plate and balance it with a stick at that point, the balancing, balancing point is going to be at this X bar, Y bar. That's the center of mass. Okay. It's because the plate is heavier here and a little bit lighter on the other side. So you would balance it closer to where the top of the plate is. Does that make sense? Okay, that's the center of mass. So the idea is that uh, if you, the more problems you do, the more you'll get used to the, the ideas where if it's constant along a certain axis, then the center of mass is going to be pretty much the middle of what you're looking at. So there might be some times where you can eliminate the work that you have to do because you know that there's symmetry along the center of mass. All right, that's fine. Let's go on. <clears throat> um, let's do like number 11, where it doesn't actually have a formula. It just talks about the center of mass being proportional to the distance from the x-axis. So it occupies the part of the disk in the first quadrant. So we're only in the first quadrant here. Uh, find its center of mass if the density at any point is proportional to its distance from the x-axis. Proportional to its distance from the x-axis. So uh, one neat thing about this is because of where the plate is, they just say the plate is just going to be in the first quadrant then we know all the x is positive, so we don't have to 
use absolute value, some other weird stuff. <clears throat> so this is uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So anything less than that is within. So this is your plate. And then uh, the density function, rho, uh, is equal to, let's be more specific, it's a function of x and y. It's proportional to its distance from the x-axis. So you guys have heard the word proportional to something, right? So what's that mean? So k, your proportional, constant of proportionality, times that, which is the distance from the x-axis. So depending on what x you're in, it's going to be going along the x-axis. <clears throat> An interesting problem is to try to figure out what the center of mass is if this is totally constant, but we have a density along the x, so there's no density along the y. <clears throat> So it looks like we need to find some stuff to find the center of mass. Uh, so we need to find the mass. So mass is equal to the double integral over the region, k times x, and then dA. Now, this is clearly a candidate for polar coordinates. Right? Instead of trying to figure out, you know, solving for x or y and the function with a circle, you can just say r. Well, r is just going to go from 0 to 1, and theta is going to go from what to what? What? Just uh, 90 degrees, right? We're going to go, whoops. Theta goes from 0 pi over 2, and we got that quarter of a circle. So those are our limits, and remember to change your dA to include r, right? r dr d theta, and then that's it. So to find the mass, this is going to be a double integral of k, and then x is going to be r cosine theta, dA is going to be r dr d theta, Rho of x, y equals k times y, distance from the x-axis. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. Yep. Distance from the x-axis. So it looks like it'll be dependent on y and not x. Thanks, Shannon. That would have been bad. <clears throat> so distance from the x-axis. So those are y distances. And the y is r sine theta. Uh, limits for r, that's your inner integral. Limits for r go from 0 to 1. Limits for theta go from 0 to 2 or pi over 2. Okay, we can split this up. We got k is a constant all the way outside. Uh, we can do our r, th r integral first. 1, r, 2, r. So that's r squared. Okay. Um, this is going to be k. Uh, the integral of r squared is r cubed over 3. You put 1 in there, you get 1 third. You put 0 in there, you get 0. So let's just call that a 1 third. Uh, the integral of sine is negative cosine. Negative cosine. You put pi over 2 into the cosine function, you get 0. Minus, minus 1, so that's a positive. Mm 
Okay. So I encourage you to do some of these integrals. Uh, we're going to have a lot of integrals that go from 0 to 1, maybe 0 to 2. But the fact that you're starting at 0 means you know some of those get wiped out. Uh, a, good, a couple of good integrals to do are the integrals from uh, 0 to pi over 2 of sine and cosine, 0 to pi of sine and cosine. You'll see they turn out to be nice numbers. 0, 1, or 2, or something like that. But do it by hand to convince yourselves. And then those are going to be some of those integrals that might be popping up that if you know off the top of your head, then you don't have to worry about working it all out. <clears throat> all right, so that's M. That's your mass. Uh, the M, MX is going to be the same thing or integrating except you're going to multiply this by y <clears throat> so you will have an integral uh, y so this is essentially y squared we can move the k outside we're going to have a y squared, so that's r sine theta quantity squared, r d r d theta, r goes from 0 to 1, theta goes from 0 to pi over 2. So unfortunately, this is not one of those easy integrals, at least I don't think so. Uh, you can still factor things out, so I have an r squared and an r, so that's an r cubed into the r integral. So this is an integral that's not so nice and easy. Unless you have it memorized, I don't have this one memorized. It's like theta over 2 minus sine 2 theta or something like that. <clears throat> so this one you'll have to work out. Are you guys doing it in your head? Did I just... Wolfram Alpha? It? Yeah, I know. And then there's all kinds of other stuff. <laughs> just, I don't. I'm just going to go ahead and ask Wolfram. Pi over 4, it looks like. Nice. Okay, just so in my notes, I'm not saying that I'm doing this in my head. So this is k pi over 12. So we got k over 3 for the first one and k pi over 12 for the mx, my. This time we're going to multiply it by x times the density function. k is a constant, go outside, integral from 0 to pi over 2, integral from 0 to 1. Uh, x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta r dr d theta again splitting it up because we can um, the r there's one there's two there's three r's again oh wait there's three r's this time huh sorry this should be one fourth nobody caught that one This is a combination of sine and cosine, which we can easily do with a U substitution, but again, I'm going to use both of them.
one half. <clears throat> so remember this, uh, this is a one fourth. I put one third there because I thought it was R squared, but it's actually R cubed. So we got K over eight. So X bar is MX over M. So MX was, what is that? K pi over 16 divided by M, which is K over three. So the K's cancel, this is gonna be three pi over 16. The y is going to be, um, this is k over 8 divided by k over 3, and this is going to become 3 over 8. So 3 pi over 16. What's 3 pi over 16? I mean, you know, ah, oh, did I do that again? Shoot. Yes, I did. Thank you. <laughs> what am I going to change now? Why? Why first? I didn't learn the first time, Jackie. Eight three pi over sixteen. <clears throat> All right, what is three pi over sixteen approximately? And three over eight. So point three seven five, point five nine. 0.37, this is 1, so 0.375 is closer over here. 0.59 is a little bit, just about halfway through. So this looks like it's going to be your center of mass. <clears throat> okay. All right, um, so there's some applications in um, statistics as well. I don't know if we're going to go into that. But I do want to show you this one polar coordinate problem. Um, if you were to try to integrate this using Cartesian coordinates, you would have to do three integrals. So the integrand is all the same. Uh, it's the region that you need to piece together into one whole region to see how it looks like. Um, so. If you could do this and uh, and work out the whole integral, might as well do the whole integral to get an actual value for this. Uh, and then give it to me at the beginning of class tomorrow, then I'll, that's uh, one point extra credit on the test. So I'll make it formal on the, on the in Canvas in the assignment. You guys are all taking pictures and stuff. You guys want to take pictures of these things and then have it like uh, automatically go to your cloud thing? I have this. This have you guys heard of Rocket Book? No. It's an app that you would have to download. I have these things where I can put it on the the screen. It's supposed to work on the whiteboard, but I'm assuming it can work here too. If I put those little markers on the side, and if you take a picture of it, of the screen, it should automatically get sent to whatever you want it to get sent to. Um, like if you want it to get sent, emailed to yourself, or if you want it to go to some Gmail account or some G Drive, what do you call those? Google Drive or Dropbox or something, you can do that. Say it again. 
Yeah, so you can move it around if you want. Um, so maybe I'll use, I'll bring those beacons and put them up there. And if you want, if you want, you can download the rock, the the, the app. It's called Rocket Book. Uh, you can you can view it, and take a look, and see if that'll work for you. Since you guys are taking pictures, anyways. All right, see you guys next time.